Welcome to video number two in the Advanced Selling Techniques training series. This is really the first training of the series because the last one was the table of contents, but what we're to cover is sales philosophy, okay? So the basics, the fundamentals, really sales were to one, but really how to think about sales, okay? So one of my mentors once told me that um, if I can teach you the right way of thinking, the right philosophy around selling, then the tactics, or in this case, the exact words to say, will naturally come through you as a byproduct of that, as a byproduct of having the right mental models, the right way of thinking, which the reason why that's so important is because when you start to become really reliant on the exact words to say or scripts or whatever, that might work well in a certain situation, but then when you get thrown into different situations or things that are unplanned or unscripted, you kind of get lost, right? Whereas when you have the right philosophy, all the masters, they have the right philosophy, they have the right way of thinking about it, then you have a ton of behavioral flexibility because you can get thrown into any situation, sales situation, and you're still going to win. You're still going to do well because you have the right underlying base and the right underlying way of thinking about it working for you. So with that being said, let's get into it, sales philosophy. So what we're gonna cover is what people really buy and why people really buy the six human needs and emotional states, tension and internal pressure, heaven island and hell island. And then we're going to finish up talking about your only two jobs on a sales call. So with that being said, what do people really buy? And why do people really buy? Well, they don't buy your offer, you company brand, testimonials, et cetera. Really what they do at the very, very highest meta level is a prospect buys because they're trying to go from current situation to desired situation. And if you look at the screen right now, you have current desired, essentially your product needs to bridge that gap. And your product needs to be the most likely path of least resistance, fastest effective, most superior, most likelihood of achievement way of getting from current to desired situation. Like a great way of thinking about that is uh, Alex Ramosi's value queue, where he has like perceived likelihood of achievement, dream outcome, time delay, effort. Like the highest equation of that is really the one the prospect is going to want to buy to close that gap, right? Between current and desired situation. Now, you've probably heard prospects buy uh, or they make decisions emotionally and then justify with logic, right? So how do we discern that? Well, you have current desired situation within each of those, within current and desired, there's logic reasons why and there's emotional reasons why, okay? There's like, I, I call it surface level reasons why. Those are things you can put your finger on. Like that's the actual situation. And then there's the emotions behind that. Okay, so again, we have current, we have desired situation, right? The prospect's gonna buy the most likely path in their mind, right? The most highest value path to get from current to desired. And then within current to desired, there's surface level and emotional. Now, within emotional, there's six key states that the prospects are either trying to get away from or buy, okay? And I got these directly from Tony Robbins' six human needs, okay? So what are they? Certainty, variety, significance, growth, contribution, and love and connection, okay? Again, certainty, variety, significance, growth, contribution, love and connection. Certainty and significance are always the most powerful if we can weave those into our pitch. Now, might seem a little meta right now, but let's get into this example and you'll understand what I mean. So we're gonna talk about... a entrepreneur on the business roller coaster okay so what that means is like if uh, the business roller coaster is the typical feast and famine thing right because you don't know where your leads are coming from you have inconsistent sales because you have inconsistent sales you have inconsistent revenue cash flow and then ultimately an inconsistent life right with a lot of ups and downs and peaks and valleys and stress so let's take this as an example like it's a real estate agent who's just working off referrals they're subject to seasonality in the market they don't know how to generate their own leads consistently repeatedly day after day, month after month, they don't really have that real business set in yet. Like they're a business roller coaster, okay? So let's imagine that's the person. So what's their surface level? Like what's their logical surface level situation current? Well, inconsistent lead flow, revenue, income life, right? Because if lead flows off, everything else is off. Well, what's the emotional level below that? Well, they have uncertainty or they lack certainty, okay? Which that's the anxiety of not knowing where the next lead or client's gonna come from. They lack significance because they're not the top performing agent in the office. They're not really getting any of the awards. They're also their family, their, their kids. Like, you know, this person wants to be the provider and really crush it, but 
he's not really getting that significance. So there's that. There's lack of love and connection, which can be for the same reasons because of the family. There's lack of growth, right? This person might have been making the same income for the last five years. There's lack of contribution because, you know, a lot of real estate agents, for instance, I used to sell real estate agents. They're passionate about what they do. They think they're the best at what they do. But what they see is instead of the best person getting the clients, the best marketer gets the clients, right? And they think they're better than that person or they'll take better care of their clients, et cetera, right? So there's that lack of contribution. Now, obviously, in this case, again, the uncertainty and then the lack of significance is going to be the most powerful things and in, in this realistic example. So then what's the desired situation? Well, the logic or the surface level is obvious, right? Consistent lead flow. Duh. Okay. But what's the emotional level below that? Well, certainty, knowing where the next client's going to come from, significance, peers look up to them, family looks up to them, love and connection, same thing, growth, they're breaking new records, contribution to make it more impact, et cetera, right? It's really just the rest of it inverted. So Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, you might be thinking, okay, great, does make sense, but how do I actually use this? Well, we'll talk about that later in the trainings. However, one thing I'll say is even just knowing this, once you have a sales process in place, I would do two things, like once I learned this. Number one, when I was doing my discovery, I try to look for these emotional pain points based on these six uh, human needs. And then in my pitch, I would, and also, you know, the pain points and when you're going in your discovery and trying to, cover heaven island and like the desire aspect of things you want to look for these emotional hit points as well the emotional desire points which is still again the six human needs and then when you have all that stuff in your discovery and you know what hits which is going to be one of these six okay then when you weave into your pitch you can weave these in or when you go into your pitch you can weave these types of things in and you can start to think about ahead of time okay like when i hit this feature I can really start to incorporate some significance elements, okay? When I hit this feature, that's where I'm going to really incorporate the certainty and the consistency and knowing for sure, right? And so you can start to just really weave those in to how you explain your features and emotionalize and dimensionalize them. And it's very, very powerful. Like when I learned this, I mean, I could feel the difference in how a lot of what I was explaining was received on the sales calls. So that's that. Let's go into understanding tension and internal pressure. So we want to build what's called healthy tension. This is also called internal pressure. So to understand this, you have to understand that in sales, there's two types of pressure. There's internal pressure and external pressure. Internal pressure means doing something for your own reasons. External pressure means doing something for somebody else's reasons, okay? Or like being coerced into doing something. So what's like the prime example in my industry? Well, fast action discounts or incentive-based pricing. That's when you say, well, you know, it's normally 15K, but we like to reward action takers. And so if you take action now, it's only 10K. Now, is that always bad? Am I making fun of it? Yes. Is it always bad? No, it's kind of like training wheels for newer salespeople. As you become more advanced, which means as you can become better at cultivating internal pressure, what happens is you don't need that anymore. And in fact, you close better without it. Um, you often find too, doing stuff, Doing external pressure type tactics, twist your arm, coercing, it loses respect of a lot of more affluent prospects too. And so the really way you, you, you have to sell if you're advanced is understanding the internal pressure that's going on and leading the conversation in such a way where you're using your questions to where they come to the conclusion that they want to move forward and they're doing it for their reasons not your reasons, at least in their mind, which usually is true anyways. You're just helping them come to that conclusion through your questions. So with that being said, internal pressure sounds great, right? How do you build it? Well, a couple things. Um, and a lot of the training is going to cover this later on. But in essence, the more clearly you can de define current situation, desired situation, like the more clearly you can paint Hell Island versus he Heaven Island and what that gap is in between, the more clear those things are, the more tension there's going to be. And that tension is internal pressure, right? So for instance, a good way to think about this is if you ever go to like a Tony Robbins seminar or like a workshop like that, uh, oftentimes, like what do they have you spend a lot of time doing? Well, they have you spend a lot of time doing, you know, goal setting and okay, understanding 
the reasons why you want to change your situation, why you have to do this, like building that necessity, what's going to happen if you don't do this, and then really painting the picture crystal clear of what you want, right? Like that's basics. Now, why do people come home ultra motivated from those seminars? It's because they have that clarity between current and desired. And when they have that, and those, those, those states are, are, are uh, spread apart very clearly, it creates this tension. Does it make sense? It creates this tension that people want to close. Okay. And that's why people come over from those seminars, super motivated, or, you know, a lot of those seminars at the end, they, they, they pitch because you're super motivated and you're like, okay, now I can attach this tension I have and this gap I want to close to this product. Right. And that's like what events do, you know, the first, if you sell at events, the event is structured to where by the time you pitch, like you really separated and created this gap. And now this is the solution to help you close it. Right. And, and prospects want to buy to close that tension. So the more clear we can make those states, which we're going to talk about how to do that in a second, the more tension there's going to be. The other thing that we're going to cover in the next video is the seven beliefs the prospects need to have to buy. And one of those beliefs is cost, right? What's going to happen if nothing changes? And when we can build the cost, okay, to where the cost of inaction is actually more expensive in the form of time, energy, money, attention, reputation, et cetera, than the cost of buying your program or buying your offer or buying your product or whatever it's going to be. When the cost is exponentially greater, that puts people into action. It's the same reason, again, going back to like a Tony Robbins seminar, what do they do? Well, they take you through a Dickens process, which is this like visualization of you basically visualizing something in your life and what's going to happen a year, three years, five years, 10 years from now, if nothing changes, like how bad that it's going to get emotionally feeling that and then bringing it back to the present moment. And he talks about how that builds leverage, right? And so again, that's another way to create internal pressure through asking the right questions. We'll cover that in the next training and the trainings thereafter. Now, a few tips on clearly defining hell island versus heaven island. The big one is when you start painting these two pictures, you want to assign numbers to it. Okay. So instead of saying, okay, you know, I want to double my business growth. You want to say, okay, you're doing 10 K a month right now. You want to get to, you know, hundred K a month, right? We have to clearly assign numbers to these. All right. Now, a couple tips about clearly assigning that when you ask somebody, Hey, what's your revenue right now? You know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, you know, like 20K a month. And then a lot of newbie salespeople will just leave it at that. But then if I say, okay, great. Well, just for clarity's sake, like what was your exact revenue last month? Exactly. They'll say, oh, well, uh, you know, they may give you a story. Then you say, okay, great. Totally understand. But like, what was it last month? Exactly. Just, just for clarity's sake. Oh, uh, well, you know, 5,500. Oh, okay, great. Right. What about the month before? So again, in that example, they just told you, oh, you know, 20K a month. And then you ask last month exactly when you get the real number, it's five. I cannot tell you how common this is because people identify usually as their top number, right? They had, they did 20K a month once this year and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm a 20K a month business owner, right? No, you're not. You last month you did five, right? And so uh, people will do that. And it's not just to deceive the salesperson. It's really deceiving themselves. But that's why you want to use that last month framework and ESP exactly, specifically, precisely to figure out, hey, like, okay, well, just for clarity's sake, what did you do last month? Great. What did you do the month before? Hopefully that makes sense. So you do the same thing. That was a business example. What if it's, uh, you know, weight loss? Okay. What is your weight? All right. What was your goal weight want to be? Okay. What was your weight this morning? If it's dating, um, how many dates did you go on last week? Okay, what about the week before? How many dates do you want to go on, right? You see how we're assigning numbers here? And that might not be the right number, but you want to think about that. What if it's uh, health, but it's not based on weight loss. It's about optimizing energy. Okay, great. You know, on a scale of one to 10, one being you can barely get out of bed, 10 being you feel like you run the New York Marathon. How do you feel right now? Scale of one to 10. Oh, okay, you feel three. Well, what does a three mean to you specifically? Tell me more about that. And then, you know, we can go into a whole probing section there. Now, um, now we're, and then you'd ask, okay, where do you want to be? Okay, 10. Okay, great. Well, what does a 10 mean to you? How do you know when you're at a 10? 
okay, you'd be able to do X, Y, and Z. If you were able to do that, what would that mean for you? And, and how would that make you, you know, so you can go through all of that, right? Um, what about occupation, like freedom? Okay, how many hours are you working now? How many hours do you want to work? Okay, what if it is, um, I'm trying to think of any other examples. We can move on. I think you get the point. You got to assign some numbers to it. And oftentimes if, if, it's, if it's tricky, you can revert to that scale of one to 10. So um, if you can't use numbers for whatever reason, which you almost normally can with a scale of one to 10, one of the things you also want to do, and this you want to do this even if you can use numbers, is imagine yourself painting a picture. And you're you're trying to paint the picture of the prospect's current desired situation. Like you were an investigative reporter. You were trying to paint this picture as clearly as possible in your mind. And you were, you're painting it. And the prospect, you're asking the prospect questions to have them help you paint the picture. When I, for whatever reason, when I use that visual... I start to ask much better questions and I start to really like, I need, I, I start to really try to focus on like seeing and feeling the entire situation, right? Like what are all of the details? What do I see, think, feel, touch, et cetera. Another great question you can ask to really get to the specifics is let's say somebody wants to leave their nine to five and start a business. And this, you, you have a coaching business that helps people do that. You can say something like, gotcha. So like, I understand, you know, you said you, you wanted to leave your, you know, nine to five for years now. Um, well, take me back to the last day or the day where you really drew the line in the sand and decided like enough was enough and it's time to like find something else and stop the nine to five lifestyle. Walk me through that day. Like what happened? And what I'm doing there is I'm essentially having them realicit what's called the moment of decision. So the moment of decision is we all have this moment. Like if you guys have ever lost weight, there's like a day or something that happens that you kind of just are like, enough is enough. I'm drawing the line in the sand. And it's what finally builds enough leverage to get you in action, right? So Tony Robbins, and I keep bringing up Tony Robbins in this in this training. It's not like, you know, my entire thing's based on, on Tony, but a lot of this mindset stuff, he has some great stuff here. But he calls that the moment of decision. And so what I want to do on a sales call is realicit that. Because when I do so, What's going to happen is I realicit, you know, not only are they telling me who, more importantly, who are they telling themselves? And in doing so, they re realicit when they tell me that story, where they realicit all of the emotions associated with that experience, which are, guess what? The emotions of change, right? And so that, usually that time, it's, it's not a gradual thing. It's not something logically that happened. It's like something happened emotionally triggering that was like, Enough is enough. I'm, I'm, I'm making a decision, right? Like I know I heard a weight loss call one time where the, the woman said, you know, my daughter hopped on my lap and said, mommy, you feel squishy, right? So like that one, for instance, is the moment of decision. Uh, there was another guy who really wanted to increase the income of his business. And he said that, you know, when the salesperson asked this question, you know, essentially what happened was a shooter came into the school that his wife was teaching at. And that day, you know, everybody was fine, but he vowed that, you know, he wants to be able to retire his wife and never put her in a situation like that again, right? So when, when that person has to explain that experience, they're doing it for themselves to remember and re-elicit all of the reasons why committing to the change they say they want to make is so important, okay? Now, let's move on to this last little part of this video. So once we elicit current desired situation, okay? prospect is going to want to resolve that tension and take action on that situation, right? That doesn't mean that they're going to buy your thing, okay? When those states are clearly separated and defined, they want to take action, but there's a lot of different ways they perceive they could get from current the desired situation. So what you have to do is remove the ways that all their perceived ways that they could get there and basically only make it to where yours is either the only way or the most obvious or the most valuable way. Okay. So think about it this way. I have this really uh, kindergarten drawing here. All right. So again, there's hell Island and then there's heaven Island, right? And so you really paint these things clearly as you can. And then there's all of these options to go from hell Island to heaven Island. That's where the sales call starts, right? So once we paint those pictures clearly, we understand what is the gap 
part of the next discovery is understanding, we do this through what's called solution-based questions. What have they tried in the past to get there? Have they been out there considering other options? What other options are they looking into? And then through those questions, our transition and our pitch, what we wanna do is essentially destroy all of the bridges except for ours, or just make ours the most, most valuable, obvious bridge that they wanna take, right? That's a masterful salesperson. You can do that really in your pitch to a really, really great education and also having the right discovery in the beginning to do so, okay? So that's how I want you to think about it, right? Separating it and creating tension from those situations, it's not enough because they might take action, but they might say, hey, you know, I want to try it myself first, but this call has been really helpful. Okay, great. That doesn't help anybody. We both know they're just going to end up right back where they were. But if we can really destroy all those paths, do it yourself, right? That's a path. If we can destroy... um you know, a certain direct competitor, a certain indirect competitor. If we can destroy this pass, then what happens is our path is the most obvious only one, right? So that's what we also want to do on that sales call to really remove all of their options. So what I put here is, think about it this way. Your only two jobs on a sales call is to, number one, understand if and, if and how you can help the prospect, okay? Number one, Understand if and help if and how you can help the prospect. Number two, eliminate all objections before the close. Okay? So with number one, when you understand if and how you can help the prospect, what you're really doing there is you're just understanding their situation. You're getting Hell Island and, and Hell Heaven Island, current and desired situation. You're just painting those as clearly as possible because through the nature of doing that, there's some psychology behind it, right? We're creating that tension, but also you're gonna understand if you can actually help them. And if so, how you actually can. Once we do that, the second part of discovery is really just eliminating all objections before the close. Okay, that means destroying all other possibilities to be able to get there, as well as other objections that could happen. So to go back to the kindergarten drawing, you can see I have these little purple fins here. These are supposed to be sharks. The sharks are objections. So what we want to do is we want to paint Hell Island, Heaven Island. Then there's these potential bridges we destroy all the bridges except for ours. And then the objections are the sharks, right? The objections of the sharks, like the money objection, the time objection, et cetera, we harpoon the sharks. So we take out all the objections, destroy all the other possibilities. So there's no sharks and we only have our bridge from hell to heaven island. That is it. And so with that said, that really concludes most of the next of the training. Um, the next training, we're to cover the belief blueprint the seven beliefs your prospect needs to have to buy, okay? So this is gonna, this was very meta level. We're gonna take it, chunk it down one level deeper on the next call, okay? See you there.